Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties this morning. It was a problem in the setup, which we didn't really realize. Regardless, though, we're, we're all here, and again, thank you for joining us to the very first ever uh, webinar for Pharma Food Care. Before we get into the presentation, I wanted to share with you a bit of an introduction and a little bit of a background. Um, my name is Jean Clavel. I'm the social media coordinator for Pharma Food Care Saskatchewan. Um, one of the objectives our group has is to engage consumers in a discussion about food and farming and really about how our food is grown. And that often happens in social media. So as a and so in the last and some of the work that we've been doing over the last few years, we've found that um, lots of farmers and industry members and supporters have had comments and questions about about how they begin, about where to begin. And then once they do get onto social media, how do we start those conversations? So that's really the reason for our for our presentation our webinar today. Um, now we're also very excited to have uh, Adrian Ivy join us. Adrian is a farmer from Ituna, Saskatchewan. Uh, she's a uh, Great. She does a great job in social media. I'm sure many of you have seen her on Facebook sharing uh, and encouraging all of us to vote for the uh, Hockeyville, um, uh, the Craft Hockeyville uh, competition. Um, and she's a blogger and uh, she's done a really good job recently of engaging media and news outlets, uh, sharing her perspective as a farmer, her education, her experience, and, and her knowledge. So thanks for joining us today, Adrian. Thanks for ha thanks for having me, Jean. <laughs> um, before I pass the mic over to Adrian, I just wanted to say we really want to make sure that everyone feels confident and comfortable moving forward and starting out on Twitter. So we want to make sure that you guys ask questions. Uh, there's a there's a chat box on the screen, so please answer answer questions there or ask questions there. You can also type in a question in the question box, and uh, we'll make sure that Adrian gets them answered. And you know, if you think of something later on, no problem. We'll leave our contact information, so please feel free to contact Adrian, myself, or even our office, and we'll be happy to assist in any way, any way we can. Um, so I guess without further ado, Adrian, I'll pass it over to you. All right. Uh, hopefully, you can all hear me. Uh, Welcome to Twitter 101, uh, one of my favorite topics and favorite um, ways of communicating with the world is definitely Twitter. I'm just trying to figure out how to see the poll results. Maybe you can help me with that later on, Jean, so I can see how many of you are on Twitter. Oh, there we go. It's not popping up. Maybe you want to screenshot it to me or something like Jean. Um, perfect. Let's just get started. Twitter 101. So what is Twitter? What's it all about? What's the hype? The thing about Twitter that I love, it's all about short messages, scan reading, and being able to filter through large amounts of information to find what's relevant for you. You can discover interesting people and, and cool topics and really just read about it at a glance to see if you want to delve further into that information. It's very personal, but it is rapid. It's super quick. Um, for example, this morning I read about the attack at British Parliament on Twitter. Uh, it was long before it hit Facebook or my local news for that matter. So what is on Twitter? Everything from Kim Kardashian to the Pope. We get to see what they're talking about at a glance. News and politics, sports, pop culture, influencers, like I said, Kim Kardashian to the Pope. Um, you can see what they're saying in real time. 
and then utility, things like if there's disasters happening in an area, um, anything like that, you will get it real time. So the stats. Twitter is big, so big, uh, it's hard to wrap your mind around it. And Jean dug these, these stats up for me and it kind of blows my mind. I knew how big Twitter was before, but this just really puts it into perspective. Every single day, 500 million tweets. And just one day's worth of tweets would fill a 10 million page book. I can't even imagine what that would look like. Uh, the most tweeted emoji is tears of joy, and I absolutely believe this because that is my favorite emoji as well. I laugh at a lot of things on Twitter. And uh, you can see some interesting tidbits there on huge Twitterers like Justin Bieber and K Katy Perry. So you've decided to discover a little more about Twitter. How do you begin? Where do we start? So you start by either choosing one or the other or both, uh, either on your smartphone or else on your personal computer. And this is the, what the icon looks like on your phone. And this is where you would go, uh, the button you need to look for on your screen if you are on a computer to start the process. So when you're signing up, you want to choose your username and your name. I, I strongly encourage you to spend a little bit of time really thinking about what you want to use for your username. It is possible to choose it, but there are some ramifications behind uh, changing it, sorry. Um, so it's something that most people will never change in their lifetime. It's something like an email address. It's unique to you and uh, definitely Yes. <laughs> I'm getting tweeted by Mr. Daily Dairy Diary and he's just totally thrown me off my mojo. <laughs> Hi Cam, I'm glad to see you're online. Uh, so you want to put a lot of info, it, put a lot of thought into choosing your username. Uh, it's not something you're going to change and you want it to be unique. You want it to be descriptive of yourself. Um, if you're okay with that level of publicness, I encourage you to use your real name. But if your real name is very common, say your name is John Smith, you might want to put in a descriptor as John Smith Rancher. Just makes, you want it to make sure that, that people can identify it as you as an individual. You want it to be relevant because people follow people. Never use numbers. If you use numbers in your username, it's a sure signal to me and to most people, I believe, that you are a robot or a spammer. So um, numbers are definitely not ideal. Avoid them if you can. And keep it short. If you put your Twitter name at, or, or your username as supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, well, you only have 140 characters to tweet. So therefore, your name alone, your username will take up somebody's entire tweet if they're trying to tweet you. And, uh, and again, just make sure you're unique and it's re relevant to you. Your name is your personal identifier. Um, it will show up on every tweet as well, but it is easily changed. Um, some people will, will change it fre frequently if they have something witty that they want to draw attention to. Uh, for example, during calving, I might change my personal name to Ranching Caver Extraordinaire. I don't often change mine, but lots of people do, so it's something you can have a little more fun with. So that there is your username. It always starts with an at sign. Farm and Food Care, at Farm, at Farm and Food Care Saskatchewan. And that is their name, their personal identifier. So once you've chosen your name and your username, you want to add a profile picture and a head picture. I strongly encourage you to do this. You do not want to be an egghead. Uh, that is what shows up when you have not added a profile picture. It's a standard picture of an empty oval head. 
and it just signifies that you're new to Twitter um, and and I encourage you to add a profile picture if you're not comfortable with it being your own face that's fine it could be a picture of your farm or your dog or whatever you want but it's important to have something there and your profile picture will show up every tweet that you send out your profile picture will be attached to that tweet they see it your header picture is only viewable when um, people look directly at your profile so here's your profile picture there for Farm and Food Care Saskatchewan and that's their header profile or their header picture and again their profile will show up on every tweet and their header only shows up when people look specifically at their profile which is what we're looking at right here and next you want to choose a description and again here you can change it as, as many times as you want so feel free to have some fun with this as well but you want to make sure that it's short and short and snappy you only have 160 characters and you want it to be a good description of who you are and what you probably will be tweeting about so that's their description right there farm and food cares and it's uh, perfectly okay to add some of your favorite hashtags that you want to draw people's attention to and then there will also later on be a chance to enter enter things like a website for example on mine my blog website is there and I would also suggest that you add a location um, it doesn't have to be as specific as your town if you are uncomfortable with that level of, of people knowing where you are but even if you just add Saskatchewan it just really helps people filter through who you are and how relevant you are uh, to what they want to learn about if they want to learn more about farming in Saskatchewan then they are more likely to follow you so Twitter's all about connecting oh actually before I go on about connecting I had a note here that I wanted to add when you're setting up your account and again it's about the level of publicness that you are comfortable with uh, something that I strongly recommend for all minors and anybody else that is uncomfortable with with being all the way out there uh, you have the option to have a public or a private uh, if you're concerned about privacy you can choose to make your account very private and this means that only those that you give permission to will see your tweets and you just go under settings and into security and privacy and check the protect my tweets box and save the changes and that way only the people that you approve similar to on Facebook um, friending someone it's a very similar process then uh, only those people will see your tweets so connecting Twitter is all about connecting all social media that's the social part of it right um, it's about human connections and having two-sided conversations not just uh, having a myspace page in the like in the 90s for everybody to see so step one is by following people um, something that I would strongly strongly um, say is that you are the curator of your own Twitter account you are in control of how much and what types of information is going to be coming through your feed so I would suggest you follow many many people you can always unfollow them um, I don't think that uh, as far as Twitter um, etiquette goes it's not like unfriending somebody on Twitter it's perfectly okay to unfollow somebody it doesn't mean you don't like them as a person it's just that you're not interested in the in the subjects that they're tweeting about and they will never get a notification or anything like that saying that you have un unfollowed them so follow people and see what they're like and see if you want to continue to have their tweets on your feed uh, definitely follow outside of your own subject box for example I found that my Twitter feed was so agriculture heavy and it was very very inside my box so I made a conscious effort to go and um, to go and follow 
other areas that were sidelines to what I'm interested in. So for example, di uh, registered dietitians, nutritionists, uh, people in the medical field, chefs and food industry people, and I, I followed them and many of them followed me back and it just really expanded what information I was seeing on my feed. So follow outside your box and fo you know, follow a d diverse amount of, p of people and subjects. And if it gets to be too many, it's kind of second level. We won't talk about it too much today, but if it's too many to handle, you can create lists so that you can choose what you're looking at. So you can see here, this is my profile. Um, this screenshot was taken a little while ago, but it shows that I'm following around 1,400 people. And not all of those tweet on a daily basis. I follow a lot of people that, that don't tweet a lot. Um, but, but again, it's a good number for me. How do you follow? Um, it's very, very easy. There's a follow button. Click it and then you follow them. Uh, and to unfollow, it's again very easy. Pull up a tweet from anybody. Uh, click on, on unfollow and you're good to go. You won't have the, see their tweets anymore coming through. You can allow Twitter to help you find friends. One thing that I would suggest doing is find somebody that you uh, are in, that you know is on Twitter or know has similar interests to you on Twitter, and see who they're following. Go back to their profile, click on their following, see who they're following, and uh, follow them as well. Follow their followers. And the other side of that conversation, if you're just following people, if you don't have followers, it's a very one-sided conversation. So you want to definitely gather some followers as well. Uh, and again, it's about quality, not about quantity. Um, it's not about racing to get as many followers as you can. There's no medals or hero cookies for having more followers than somebody else. Um, it's more just, if you have followers, it's easier to have a conversation, and it's easier if if you're tr if you're telling your farm story and things like that, then you already have a bigger base of ways to spread your message. So the best way to gather far followers is by engaging with other people. So always just jump in on a conversation again that is not considered rude on Twitter by any way shape or form it's perfectly acceptable if daily dairy diary has some interesting thing if he said something interesting this morning and you have something interesting to say about it uh, the same subject jump in there reply to his tweet quote tweet his tweet and add your two cents that's the great part about Twitter, is how well people can just join in on conversations. Uh, one thing that I would definitely add though, when it comes to connecting, connect in a positive way, um, keep the negativity off Twitter and off the public feed. Um, if you have not so positive things to say, direct message somebody or, or have, that, have that conversation where everybody doesn't need to look at it, especially when it's um, farmers talking to each other or anything like that. Keeping negativity off the Twitter sphere is, is super important. So let's get tweeting. So a tweet, the, the glory of Twitter is its brevity and how short messages can really have a high impact. So a tweet is, you're only allowed 140 characters, which is very, very small if you're a wordy person like I am. I managed to fill up every single one of my tweets to the, its max and have to edit to get it down to the 140 characters. Um, if you are over the 140 characters, it'll show a little red character count at the bottom of the tweet and until you delete, until you hit 140 characters, you are not able to send it. 
it used to be back a few years ago that pictures and videos were included as a link in your tweet and they used up a chunk of those 140 characters but now they're just a nice add-on the Twitter changed to allow pictures to be included outside of that 140 characters so that was a great a great thing to allow us a few more words So here we go, uh, just when you're composing a tweet, you, um, uh, if you're on your phone, a little square with this icon here will show up. You click on it, type in your message, press send, and there you go, you've done your first tweet. So you want to be real. Um, just like in person, nobody likes to fake a fake person. Be yourself, be engaging share pictures and videos. Um, I always say when it is, comes to sharing our farm story or, or whatever it is that you're working on, um, for example, I, I just had a pretty in-depth out, an in-depth um, campaign for Ituna as Craft Hockeyville. Pictures are worth a thousand words and videos our short videos, I should be specific, are worth a thousand pictures. They really engage people, they draw their eye, and they create interest without having to read a lot of words. And uh, you want to have a bit of a balanced Twitter account. So 30% original content, 30% replies or comments, 30% retweets. Uh, you'll You'll notice once you're on Twitter that uh, there's some people that can be a little chatty. Some days I would fall into that category and uh, and they would far outweigh this 30% on the replies or comments. But it's really important to try to keep your original content as much as possible just, just to keep your whole Twitter account engaging. Like all social media, once it's posted, it cannot be edited. Once it's posted, it can't be edited. Once it's, a tweet is out there, it will always be out there. Yes, you can delete a tweet, but that doesn't stop people from screenshotting it. So, um, prime example: last week, when McDonald USA's Twitter account was was hacked, and a negative tweet about Donald Trump was out there. Uh, they were notified by Twitter immediately that their account was hacked, they deleted the tweet, but everybody in the world that saw that tweet immediately screenshotted it, and it is out there still for the world to see. You, you can't take it out, you can't take it back once it's out there. And Twitter imposes a limit of 1,000 tweets per day. Even a prolific Twitter like myself, I've never actually reached that 1,000 limit, but it is there something to be aware of. So the ideal length of a tweet is 70 to 100 characters. Again, like I said, I'm a very wordy person, so I usually go over that. Uh, but to keep it engaging, uh, it's definitely good to keep short is better. Short and sweet, the, the way to success with Twitter. Uh, something else that I've learned, and I will even give a shout out to Mr. Cam Hool, that I learned this from him, that sometimes, you can really capture more attention by using spacing very effectively. Uh, you put a space between your sentences, uh, make your tweet look longer, because that, that space underneath the sentence um, just draws more attention and makes your tweet look bigger without having it be wordy. So tweets that include question marks receive quite a few fewer clicks. That being said, they may be less engaged, but the responses that you can get from tweets where you ask a question can be some of the most valuable conversations that you've ever had. Uh, last week, I tweeted a question asking the Twitterverse, what advice would you give farmers that are new, newbie Twitterers if they were just starting out? 
and the responses I got were 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 incredible. Uh, question is a wonderful way to start a conversation. And tweets with one hashtag are far more effective. If you stick 20 hashtags in a tweet, it just clutters it up and makes it harder to read and, and um, harder to understand. When it comes specifically to sharing your farm story, tweet like the world is watching, be honest, not aggressive, be open, not confrontational, and stick to what you know. So this is just the idea of being a positive force on social, any social media, but Twitter in particular, is something that I can't shout out loud enough. Um, positivity will get us so much farther in any campaign, in any way of sharing our story than uh, being negative. People like to hear from and listen to positive people. That doesn't mean we need to sugarcoat or ignore any problems, uh, but just come at them from a positive light that these, this is an issue, but we're working on it, whatever it is. And stick to what you know. Uh, this took me a while to figure out in my online educating journey. Uh, just because I know a lot about cows and or grain farming or or whatever it may be, doesn't mean that I'm the right person to answer questions about eggs or dairy or whatever it is. Uh, but the great part about once you have an online network is that you know people that can give those answers. So I will often um, send people with questions about uh, areas of agriculture that I don't know a lot about. I, will, I have people that I'll send them to for those questions. Engagement on Twitter. This is one of my favorite parts about Twitter is that it's really easy to see how effective your tweets are being, much more so than Facebook. It's very easy to see how many people have seen a tweet or have clicked on a tweet or have um, shared it, shared it or replied to it or, or all that kind of stuff. Here you go, Cam. So right here is where you can see a quick screenshot on any tweet. On this particular tweet, Cam has had 17 replies, 27 retweets, and 126 likes. So this is how you know if you're on the right track, if what you're tweeting is working, if it's being seen, and if it's being shared. So to have a really in-depth look at that, bat, you can go to any one of your own tweets and click on View Tweet Activity. And again, you can only do this on your own tweets. You can't, you can't do it um, uh, on somebody else's tweet. It has to be your own. So for example, on this tweet of mine, when I clicked on that, it comes up 25,000 people have seen this tweet and 3,000 people have interacted with it. So that means that they have clicked on it somewhere, um, maybe on on Justin Trudeau, on one of the two hashtags, or else on the picture. Uh, before I go on to the next, I had a question. What is the ideal length of video to share? It used to be that on Twitter you could only share a very um, short video, I think under 30 seconds, uh, but it can be a little bit longer now, I believe, um, but really, how long is anybody, Twitter's all about short and snappy, right? People aren't going to sit and watch a five minute video on Twitter. Um, it depends really, the ideal length of a video is, it's dependent on what is in the video. You want to make sure that you edit it so it's a short to only be showing specifically what you will, what your viewers will find engaging. But I find that a 20 second video uh, if I'm moving cattle or uh, the first steps of a baby calf or anything like that, 20 seconds is, a, is an excellent um, mark to, to aim for. All right, learn the lingo. We already talked about tweeting and how to do that. 
a retweet is the equivalent of sharing something on Facebook. And it's a great way to pass along anything that you find really relevant or you think that will be relevant to your followers. Uh, for example, uh, animal where I might I might retweet a tweet about animal welfare or um, grazing or or anything like that. And you just it's very easy. You click on the double arrow at the bottom of any tweet. So right here you will see this little almost like the recycling symbol. That's what you click on to retweet, and then it's shared. And everyone that follows you, it will come on their feed. And retweets can be undone. Uh, if once you have retweeted something, you can go back onto the same button and click undo. But again, be, be aware that screenshots will, shots will happen. When it does come across your followers feed, it will show very clearly that you had retweeted it. So don't retweet something that you will regret later. Um, a quote tweet is another really excellent tool. If you have a tweet that you want to share with everybody, but you also have a comment further to that tweet, uh, this is a great option. You click on the same, same, same icon at the bottom of the tweet, and this menu will come up. Choose quote tweet, and you will be able to type in your message and then send. You can see from this example right here, actually, that this was a tweet that I, quote, tweeted. This was the original tweet of Gerard Lampau, and I, quote, tweeted it and added in my, my thoughts about his tweet. So a like, a like is a like, and anybody that is familiar with Facebook will be familiar with the idea of liking something. It's the small heart at the bottom of the tweet, and you use it to show appreciation, or that you agree with what's in a tweet. Or I will often like something if I'm trying to encourage that person to tweet more of what, what they just tweeted. Uh, you can see what anybody has liked in the past by looking at their profile page and clicking on the likes tab right there. So a reply, on, way back on that other tweet of Cam's, I had mentioned he had had a number of replies. So that's just a response to another user's tweet, uh, kind of like commenting on their tweet. So you click on the reply button, which is right down here, and reply to that tweet. So this shows up as, as me replying to my own tweet, which you can do if you want to keep a chain of conversation going and it will link those tweets together. And that's what's important about replying instead of quote tweeting, is that when you reply, it, it maintains that chain of conversation, whereas when you quote tweet, you're starting a brand new chain of conversation. So when you start a tweet with a username, with the at sign, the only people that see that tweet are the users that both follow you and the person that you're tweeting. So, for example, in this, in this example, if I was replying to um, one of Jean Clavel's tweets, it would only be viewed, it would only come on the feed of people that follow both Jean and I. This is why sometimes you will see that tweets start with a period, and that's because if you want your tweet to be more public then, and you want all of your followers to see it, not just the ones that also follow Gene, then you need to start it with something other than the at sign.
and all all replies will show up in your notifications tab. So just like you get Facebook notifications, you also get Twitter notifications and they will show up and um, you will get notified every time you are mentioned, which means every time somebody uses your username in a tweet, that's a mention, uh, then you'll get a notification. Every time somebody retweets your tweet or likes your tweet or replies to your tweet, you will get a notification. Hashtags or as my old-fashioned husband calls them, the pound sign. So it's using the hashtag symbol in front of a word or a string of words. So for example here on Farm and Food Cares, Saskatchewan's tweets, there are two hashtags, hashtag real dirt and hashtag Canadian Ag Day. Tweets cannot have punctuation in them or spaces. And they are very, it, they make a word or phrase searchable. So anybody could search hashtag real dirt in Twitter and would come up with every tweet that has the hash, real dirt hashtag in it, whether or not they follow those people that used it. So it's a really cool way of being able to follow a subject. For example, on the campaign that I just did with, with Ituna and Hockeyville, uh, you, the use of the hashtag Craft Hockeyville was very important. It was a way for us to gauge how many people were tweeting about us and about the other towns involved. And it was, just makes it a very easy way to follow any one subject. One thing to be aware of is that nobody owns a hashtag. Um, it doesn't matter who started a hashtag, whose, whose brilliant idea it was, they can be hijacked and used for, for some not so positive reasons. A prime example of that is, is hashtag Farm365. When Fresh Air Farmer, Andrew Campbell, first started that hashtag, it was a very, very positive story, but it quickly was jumped on by vegan activists and um, used for some very, very negative messaging. It was a happy ending story, uh, really brought the farming community together and was a great way for all farmers across not only Canada but across the world to share their story. Uh, but it was definitely something that, that really brought awareness to the negative ways that hashtags can be used. So like I mentioned, they can't have spaces or punctuation in them. Um, and it makes your tweets very much more public because anybody who searches for that hashtag will see any tweet that you used it in unless you have a private account. So uh, I mentioned before for, for great engagement, try not to use too many hashtags. Any more than a couple just becomes very cluttered in your tweet. I mean, you can have an entire tweet of hashtags but I don't know if many people will, will take the time to sort it out and read it. And definitely use hashtags to discover the content that's, that's relevant to you and things that you want to learn more about. So these are some great examples. And to this list, hashtags that I often use are hashtag ranch life, hashtag farm to table, um, hashtag Canadian egg, hashtag Western Canadian egg, uh, just ways of, of pulling a subject together. And uh, hashtags often become trending topics. Uh, I was super, super proud after our first go round of tweeting to have Ituna trending uh, as a word on Twitter. And this was one way that we definitely made that happen. So trends, more to that. Trends are the hottest emerging topics of discussion on Twitter at any given time. Um, and it just lists what is being talked about the most. And it's a great way of seeing what is happening on any given day in the world. 
So cautions. Like any other social media platform, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever floats your boat, Twitter can be addicting and time sucking. There have been many times that I need to put, put the phone down and focus on what I'm doing. Uh, perfect example is when my husband and I were bringing in an orphan calf and we were on the gator and I was taking pictures to tweet about this cute calf and in the process of tweeting about it he kicked me square in the face because I was tweeting instead of working. So just be aware that um, manage your time use on it. Don't post your specific location. Again, with any social media, um, this can lead to all sorts of trouble. Be careful about how much personal information you disclose. Uh, this is something that should be in the back of everyone's mind. And, uh, you know, when you are tweeting about, woohoo, having a great time in the Bahamas, Bahamas, well, your house is getting broken into. We've all heard those kind of horror stories and something to be aware of. And again, I would strongly encourage minors to use a protected account. Um, so when it comes to activists or negativity uh, pushback on Twitter, it's always a question of to engage or not to engage. So when you come across this kind of negativity or um, pushback or flat out full on activism, it's important to the, the first part is to take a breath, be calm, don't reply until at the very least you've had time to calm down and you have a cool head. Uh, tweeting in anger never is a good thing. It rarely, it rarely solves problems, it usually does more creating problems. Uh, don't just debate, don't have a back and forth, it's this way, no it's this way, it's this way, no it's this way. Have an actual conversation with somebody if you choose to, if you choose to engage them, um, and that has to go both ways with lots of questions from both ends. And remember that people are still people, and somewhere deep down there they'll have similar values to you that you can connect with. Stick to what you know. I've learned myself. I don't need to have a 10-hour Twitter battle about um, laying hens. And agree to disagree. Definitely, what I always what I always say is that it is not my job to change anyone's mind. Um, for example, vegan activists that I've definitely had encounters with on Twitter, they it's not my job to it's not my job to change their mind or to tell them that they should eat meat. That is like delving into the issues of religion or politics. Um, she, should, she or he should do whatever they want to do, that's fine. What I, what I do try to do though is counteract any negative, um, not negative, but complete flat misinformation. Anything that is just wrong, uh, I will correct with, with information that I have. Uh, for example, somebody said, for every pound of beef, 37 trees are cut down. Well, it's just not true. Uh, trees are an uh, integral part of our ranch and something that we value and want to keep. So, um, it's again, it's just not true. So I will counter that with, with what the tree situation is on our ranch. And I don't do that, again, to try to change that person's mind. Um, but the thing is, is that on social media, you always have an audience and for any conversation you have, there may be hundreds or thousands of other people on the sidelines watching that conversation. So you want to be calm, reasonable, truthful, and just counter any, any complete incorrect facts or lies that are out there. So let them let them be the crazy person. That's fine. In the end, um, it's not about scientific facts or spouting um, studies. I mean, you want them to be facts and you want them to be science based, but it's not about the studies and the research and the really really detailed things that people are always worried that I don't have the answers to. What it comes down to is being a reasonable person and and talking from the heart about the hows and whys of your own farm. 
always be polite and professional and always be respectful because when you are the calm person, you will always be viewed as the winner in the end. So if people are raising your blood pressure by what, what they're tweeting, unfollow them. It's very simple. And if they keep coming back to you, report them immediately. Um, or, or, and report maybe isn't the right word, but block them. It's very easy to block anybody by the little arrow in the corner of any tweet. And a menu will come up that gives you some different options. And blocking a tweet, reporting a tweet, or muting muting a person or a conversation is an option and don't be afraid to do that because social media is about needs to be fun and if somebody is is really either harassing you bullying you or just plain old ticking you off feel free to block them it's the quickest way to move on so when you're starting out on twitter Everybody feels a little overwhelmed at the start. I know I definitely did, but start slow and feel free to lurk. Um, watch what other people are doing, how they're tweeting and, and what they're saying and who they're watching and just learn from the people around you on Twitter. Just like in our everyday lives, we learn from the people around us. And again, you are the curator of your own account. You control your experience and you can make it into whatever you want it to be. So have fun at it. Uh, here are the handles of myself, Jean Clavel, and Farm Food Care Sask. Definitely feel free to contact us with any questions. Um, we, I'll answer any questions online here right away. Uh, but after that, definitely feel free to contact us. Um, that's something I would like to mention also that in order to direct message somebody on Twitter, that you need to follow each other and it is perfectly within the ethics of or the um, etiquette of Twitter to send somebody a tweet and say hey Jean Clavel can you give me a follow I want to message you that gets done all the time so any questions that are out there uh, type them in I would love to answer them okay Adrian great job um, like she said, we'd love to hear your questions. Um, I have a couple, Adrian. Maybe you can, not questions so much, but maybe you can share some of your perspectives. I know I've had some pretty interesting um, discussions. I'm not even sure if they'd be called conversations on Twitter. Maybe you can tell maybe something that explained or share one of the difficult, challenging conversations you've had, and then maybe one of the success stories you felt you, you've had on Twitter. Yeah, sure. Um, you know what, actually I have to think a little bit hard about that because it's been such a long time since I've had a activist encounter. Um, the, the animal rights activists have been so um, quiet on, on my view lately, which is a wonderful thing, I love that. But back specifically when Farm 365 started, and I was pretty new on Twitter then to be honest, and this Farm 365 was one of the things that really drew me to Twitter in the first place and got me more active on it. But I learned the hard way about engaging. Um, there were nights that I probably tweeted six hours straight with somebody who I was never going to change their mind of anyways. Um, but I felt like I had to change their mind and I couldn't let it go. So I'm much, much better at letting it go now and being able to spot somebody whose mind isn't open. I think that's the biggest thing is that knowing, knowing when their mind is open or it isn't, it's one thing to have a discussion and it's another thing to bang your head against the wall. And also that whole experience taught me the good, how many good people are on Twitter too. Um, way back when that first happened, uh, that is actually how I first met Daily Dairy Diary online, uh, was that he jumped into one of those conversations and really had my back. And it just blew me away that I could be having this 
absolutely heart-wrenching discussion on Twitter with somebody that I was getting nowhere with and that people I didn't even know were willing to jump in and, and support me. And so that really made me see how supportive farmers are of each other on Twitter. It really was a cool experience. Great Does that answer your question? Yep, yep, really good. Um, Patricia had a question for you. She asked, what kind of family shares are recommended, for example, kids and photos? What's your thoughts? I think that that is uh, dependent on a couple things. Uh, the first one, I think, is your location. Um, you know, I have friends that are are advocating from out, just outside of major centers, and you're just exposed to so much more, um, a, a, so, such a higher population of negative people and activists if you're close to a negative, if you're close to a large center. Um, but also, it just comes down to personal comfort level, really. Um, there are people I know um, um, that have had a lot of issues with activists, and they will not tweet pictures of their family or their location or mention their children's names or anything like that. I'm I'm very much the opposite. Um, I am as transparent as transparent can be. Uh, my kids are out there for everybody to see my farm and my location. I mean, that being said, we're in the middle of nowhere, but still I've opened that door. Um, and at this point, I feel very comfortable doing that. I have never had any icky feeling moments where I feel like, oh boy, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Like I know that some other people have had. Um, Andrew Campbell, Fresh Air Farmer, has talked before about the first time that a picture of his lane showed up on an animal rights activist with talk about people going there and, and how scary that was to him and his family. Uh, I've never had that moment and I think that the, the, my ability to share not only my story but what my, my kids' activities on the farm and things like that it just makes me such a more of a real person to people, uh, more real, more trustworthy, and just more like all the other women and mothers that are looking for answers. They can see that I'm a mother and that the more I care about my kids, the easier I am to connect with. It just makes a big difference in connecting with consumers. But again, it just comes back to your personal comfort level. Okay, thank you. Uh, Stephanie McMillan has a question for you. She's, she asks, uh, I've noticed that some tweets have shortened links to websites or videos. When I tweet, I always tweet the full URL address and it takes up a lot of the allowed characters. How do you create those shortened links? Great question, Stephanie. That is a great question. Um, so you can go to a website like Bitly and uh, type in the, or or copy and paste the website that you're going to be tweeting about and it will give you a shortened link. And it's a fabulous way to do that. I tend to um, not do that. I tend to use the full link mostly because my, my tweets are long enough that um, I should be reducing some of the words that I'm using anyways. Um, but yeah, Bitly is an excellent website that you can use for that. We also use Hootsuite, which is kind of nice for us. We can we can schedule our when tweets go out, and it will also shorten the URL as well. Hootsuite's an excellent platform as well for connecting all of your social media platforms together. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I have another uh, question for you, Adrian. Maybe can you just talk about or touch on a little bit um, about the people watching? component of conversations. I think we sometimes underestimate that. So can you just touch on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the biggest thing to wrap your mind around on Twitter is that how, one way that it's very different from, from Facebook in that every time that somebody comments on my tweet, then anybody who follows both of us, it's going to scroll through their news again. So it really is going to um, proliferate that conversation. So if it's 
if it's a positive thing, that's great. If it's a negative thing, it just really draws a lot of attention to it. Um, anytime you're having an argument or whatever, every time people, every time you comment and and lengthen that conversation, it really draws that much more attention. And usually, typically, the people who are negative and, and activists and that sort of people, what they're looking for is exactly that kind of attention. And also, they're looking to draw the attention of not only myself, but all of my followers. So when I'm engaging, I'm bringing all of my followers into this fight. And so that's definitely the danger of, of engaging. And I guess perhaps also it's, it's the opportunity too, um, that, you know, you, what you're saying before, Adrian, about, about being calm and being professional and respectful and providing reasonable, rational answers. For the people that are following that conversation, they're going to take away some really good information. And so maybe it's not the conversation, you know, you're not going to have a win in that conversation, uh, like with the other person, but everyone else that's reading that, they're going to see it and they're going to say, man, that, that Adrian, she's on to something there. I think I'm going to follow her. I think I'm going to listen to her. I think she has some really good things to say. So to me, I guess it's also an opportunity. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, because because just like the activists are looking at, at, at gaining attention from my followers, I can also take the same opportunity. And I, I know the people that are following me are, are already somewhat engaged in what I'm saying, but mm. all the sideline people that aren't so set as the activists that I'm, that I'm following, but their followers that are, that are still somewhat in the middle, they are hearing what I'm having to say. And those are the people that I can, that I, get excited about having an impact with. Cool. That's great. Is there any more questions, anyone? Okay, it doesn't look like. Um, any other thoughts, Adrian? I think that that's wonderful. I, um, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining on today. I think it's cool that just looking at my notifications on my Twitter feed right now, cool that uh, there's a bunch of people on here that are already well versed in Twitter uh, combined with some people that are that are brand new so hopefully everybody got a little bit of something out about it I think so and uh, uh, Adrian like we said had had included our Twitter handle um, so please if you have any more questions please feel free to contact either one of us or our office, uh, our contact information is on our website. Uh, so please feel free to, to get in touch with us and we're happy to help in any way we can. So I think with that, we can, we'll wrap up and uh, we look forward to hearing from you and uh, chatting on Twitter. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone and uh, follow me on Twitter and let's start a conversation. Great, bye-bye.